Good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work out the quiz review. I mean, the qu yeah, quiz review class kick. So you guys have another <clears throat> video to look at, some practice problems to study, that sort of a thing in preparation for our quiz, which again is going to be on Tuesday. So I have the binomial 5 minus 3i quantity squared. What that means is I have 5 minus 3i two times. So I'm going to write them both out and then FOIL. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times negative 3i is negative 15i. Negative 3i and 5 is negative 15i. And negative 3i. And negative 3i is positive 9i squared. As soon as we see that i squared, we cross it off, change the sign in front. So 25 minus 9 is going to give me 16. <clears throat> and negative 15i. Negative 15i is going to give me negative 30i. And there you go. All right, my second one, I'm going to rewrite this actually as the square root of 11 minus i square root 7 times the square root of 11 plus i square root 7. I just don't like the i's in the back of the square root. Sometimes it sneaks up under, <coughs> excuse me, and it's hard to see. So we're just going to keep it like that. So let's go ahead and foil. I have the square root of 11 times the square root of 11. That's the square root of 121, which yes, I know is 11. Then I have the square root of 11 <coughs> times i root 7. So it's going to be plus i square root of 77. Then I have negative i root 7 times square root of 11, so minus i square root 77. And then I have a negative i, and a negative i is going to give me negative i squared times the square root of 49. 7 times 7 is 49. Some of you are saying, can I just go ahead and simplify that? Yes, of course you can. I'm just writing every step out so you guys can see. So now I see that the square root of 121 is 11. My Positive and negative <clears throat> i root 77 will cancel. I have minus i squared is negative 1, and the square root of 49 is 7, so minus a negative 7. Well, when you have minus a negative, that becomes plus, and your answer here simplifies to just 19. This question, we are multiplying two radicals, but if you guys notice, there's an i underneath, so what the first thing we need to do is simplify. We've got to get that i, that negative 1, out from underneath the radical. So this is negative 1 times 4 times 2. This would be negative 1 times 25, <clears throat> excuse me, times 2. So over here on the left-hand side, the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 4 is 2. So you have 2i square root of 2 times, over here I have the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 25 is 5, so I have 5i square root of 2. So now we can go ahead and multiply the stuff on the outside. 2i times 5i gives me 10i squared. As soon as I see that i squared, I cross it off and change the sign. Then I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4. So we can simplify this a little more. The square root of 4 is 2, and I multiply that by negative 10, and my answer is negative 20. All right, moving along, we have our i to the whatever power, and we have to simplify. Now notice, guys, your i to the negative 53rd. This right here is what we are concerned about, having a negative exponent. If you have a negative exponent, how do we make it positive? You move it. You don't move the entire number down. You move just where the negative exponent is. So this is going to move down here. So this is negative 12 over i to the 53rd power. So now we're going to break it up into an even power and 1. And the reason that we do that is so we can then write our even power in terms of i squared. So i squared raised to the, I'm going to take 52 and divide it by 2, and I get 26 times i. <coughs> well, i squared is negative 1. The 26 power just gives me 1. So in my denominator, I'm left with that i. So as we simplify, it's negative 12 over i. But we've learned no radicals in the denominator, no i's in the denominator. So we need to rationalize. We're going to rationalize top and bottom. So I have negative 12 times i over i squared. As soon as we see i squared, guys, we cross it off, change to the negative 1. And then a negative divided by negative is a positive. So this simplifies to 12i. All right, we come to these next two. We are dividing. What's the problem here? Well, you cannot have i's in the denominator. So if you have two terms, you see how I have something separated by a plus or minus sign? We need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So I'm going to look here and I'm going to say the opposite or complex conjugate of 2 minus 5i is 2 plus 5i. And what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So 2 plus 5i. 
I like to go ahead and divide, multiply the bottom just to make sure that my eyes cancel out before I go any further. So two times two is four. Two times five I is plus 10 I. Negative five I and two is minus 10 I. And negative five I and negative five, and positive five I is negative 25 I squared. We see that I squared, so we cross it off, change the sign. So I have four plus 25 gives me 29, which what happened? Our eyes canceled out right here, and which is exactly what we needed to happen. <clears throat> so now we can go ahead and simplify the top. Eight times two is 16. Eight times five I is plus 40 I. Six I times two is plus 12 I. And six I and five I is plus 30 I squared. As soon as we see that I squared, we cross it off and change that sign in front. So I have 16 minus 30 is going to give me a negative 14. And then 40i and 12i is plus 52i. And if we're going to write it like it says here in standard a plus bi form, we would need to separate it. Say negative 14 over 29. That's my real part. And then plus 52i over 29. That's the imaginary part. <clears throat> Neither of those simplifies, so we're good to go. Same thing over here, I have an i in my denominator. I can multiply the top and bottom guys by seven i or just i itself. It doesn't matter. Um, if you do seven i, you're just gonna have to simplify a little more at the end. But I'm gonna do just the i itself because we cannot have this in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply the top by i and the bottom by i. So on the bottom, I have seven i squared, which as soon as I see i squared, I cross it off and make negative. And then on the top, I have i times 1 is i minus i times i is i squared. So as we see that i squared, we cross it off and change the sign. So remember, there's a 1 there. So now I'm going to write this in standard form. So I have so 1 plus i over negative 7. And then to separate it into a plus b i, it's 1 over negative 7 plus i over 7. Okay, a problem like this, guys, this for some reason causes us a lot of issues, and I'm not exactly sure why. You have to understand what's going on here. You're multiplying this four in here. We're multiplying these two together. You need to distribute this negative six <clears throat> to both things in the parentheses behind, and then we'll combine like terms. But you cannot, this is not a whole big multiplication problem. It's not just one big whole um addition, subtraction problem. It's a combination of both. So I'm going to first leave my negative four out here and I'm gonna foil these two. So seven times five is 35. Seven times minus negative i is minus seven i. Three i times five is plus 15 i. And three i times negative i is negative three i squared. <coughs> as soon as I see that i squared, I cross it off, change the signs. So I still have my negative 4 out here, and I'm going to combine. 35 and 3 is 38, and then negative 7i and positive 15i is plus 8i. Okay, we've simplified that. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. I'm going to distribute that negative 6 times 2 is going to give me negative 12, and negative 6 times negative 9 is going to give me positive 54i. So before I do anything else, I've got to distribute right here, this negative 4. So negative 4 <coughs> here and here. Negative 4 times 38 is negative 152. Negative 4 times 8i is negative 32i. Then I have minus 12 plus 54i. And now we're just going to combine like terms. Negative 152 and a negative 12 is going to give me negative 164. And then negative 32i plus 54i is going to give me plus 22i. All right, these last two, these last two are solving. <clears throat> Anytime we're solving a quadratic, the first thing we would love to do is factor. If we can, these aren't going to factor. Then we can either solve by using an even root property. We can use the quadratic formula. We can complete the square, all the good stuff. What I notice here is that I have an x squared and a constant. I do not have a b term. So I'm going to go ahead and just isolate that x squared. I'm going to move 10 to the other side. So I have 9x squared equals negative 10, and then divide both sides by 9. So x squared equals negative 10 over 9. So now what do we do? We take the square root. Well, when you put the square root on, plus or minus goes in front of your answer. 
Remember, this is the square root of negative 10 over the square root of 9. So this would become <coughs> negative 1 times 10 over 3. So x equals plus or minus. The square root of negative 1 is i. So the i comes out. The 10 stays underneath. And the square root of 9 is 3. So there's my answer here. Remember, guys, at this step, if you have a radical in the denominator, you have to rationalize and get it out. And lastly, I have this question. It's a quadratic. Um, since I have x squared and x, we'd like to move everything to one side and set equal to zero. So 2x squared plus 3x plus 8. When I move eight, negative 8 to the other side, it becomes positive equals zero. So you can complete the square, <clears throat> which is not going to be the easiest of things to do because your a term is not 1 and your b term is odd. So you're going to deal with fractions, but you can do it. Or we can use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and say a is 2, b is 3, and c is 8. So quadratic formula, x equals negative b, so negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 3 squared minus 4 times a is 2 times c is 8, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. Make sure that your signs are correct. <clears throat> Make sure that you have everything in the right spot, because if you mess up on this step, then the whole problem is going to be wrong. So just make sure this is a critical step right here. So now we simplify. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root. Well, 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 64 all over 2 times 2 is 4. So we keep simplifying. I have negative 3 plus or minus the square root. 9 minus 64 is negative 55 over 4. So we'll keep simplifying. I'll go down here. I have negative 3 plus or minus. If I break up 55, it's negative 1 times 5 times 11. All right, there's no perfect squares hidden in there. But I do see a negative 1 underneath, so we've got to get that out. The square root of negative 1 is our i. So negative 3 plus or minus i square root of 55 over 4. If you were going to split it up and write it in the a plus bi, it would be negative 3 over 4 plus or minus i root 55 over 4. It doesn't look like a 55. So let's fix that. So it looks a little prettier. And there you have it. <clears throat> All right, guys, so make sure we are practicing. We can simplify. We can add. We can subtract. We can multiply. We can divide. We know how to pull the i's out. All that good stuff. And then for solving, you want to get everything to one side. Quadratic formula, completing the square. If it's a binomial squared, set equal to a number. Just take the square root. Don't forget our plus and minuses. All that good stuff. No radicals in the denominator. No i's in the denominator. See you all tomorrow.